everyone. I'm sitting here in my backyard because I can't travel anywhere. Probably similar to what everybody else is uh, doing these days. Staying at home to stay safe. So when you can't travel, you start looking at some mini projects or things to do. And I've come up with one and I thought I'd share that with you. I've been looking at my old uh, photographs, so I think it's time to convert them from analog to digital. I do recall the first camera my parents had was a Kodak Brownie. It's, you know, one of these. If you remember those, you look through the glass here at the top and take a photo. So that's the first one I ever operated, but later in the late 70s, 80s, I progressed to an SLR and uh, I bought an Olympus OM2 35mm camera, which is this one here. It's, as you can see, been gathering a lot of dust because it hasn't seen any use for a long, long time because I progressed from analog to digital in 2000 when I got my first digital camera and haven't looked back since. But, but I do have a number of slides and 35mm negatives from my travels uh, during that time. So it's probably time to convert them to digital. Now I had uh, ambitions to do that a few years ago and I actually bought an Epson Perfection V800 scanner for the job. Uh, but for whatever reason, I've never been uh, motivated to do it until now when you have next to nothing to do. So I took my scanner out of storage and dusted it off and I found my negatives and slides and I've started scanning my slides. In this video I'll just show you my workflow. It might be useful for someone who's looking at doing things like that, especially with the software package I've got because the Epson scanner came with two packages, uh, Epson software and Silverfast. Apparently Silverfast is uh, considered the best package you can get when scanning slides or negatives. And it's optimized for working with the Epson scanner. So uh, I began using Silverfast and it's a bit daunting at first to use these packages, but I managed to scan slides and negatives, but one of the problems I had is that it's very time consuming to do. So I figured out I had to have a optimized process to do the scanning, especially when you have hundreds if not thousands of slides or negatives. Therefore, I read the documentation, watched a lot of YouTube videos, and I finally worked out a, a, a workflow process that works well for me. So that's what I'll be sharing with you. I'm not a professional photographer, so I won't be giving you the in-depth details of how to touch up uh, photos before you add, before you scan them or during the scanning process. There's plenty of videos to do that, but I'll give you some basic ideas. So the software package that came with the Epson scanner uh, was Silverfast SC, and uh, I decided that I would upgrade to Silverfast Studio AI because it has more capabilities and gives you some extra features which may well be worthwhile, especially if you're scanning a lot of photos and occasionally want to go and scan something which is more valuable uh, going forward. So let's 
uh, go into my study and I'll show you my setup before we start and then I'll show you the Silverfast software and how I use it for the scanning. Uh, I'll uh, give you some tips I've discovered, uh, what works, what doesn't work and things like that along the way. So hopefully you'll enjoy that and maybe if uh, I manage to scan some of my old travel slides, I might share that in a separate video, but let's see. So let's head into the study now and I'll show you my setup. Hi, here we are in the study. So let me show you my setup. First of all, the slides are here. So this is a couple of slide carriers. So I'm in the process of scanning these slides. That's the light box or light table where you can uh, see through the slides. So makes it uh, a lot easier to check the slides for blemishes or problems. Now, these are some of the tools. I'll talk about them separately. And then over here, I've got the slide scanner itself, the Epson V800. Now, it has a slide carrier and it can take 12 slides. Uh, I obviously take that carrier from the scanner once I've finished scanning and put it over here so I can load the slide scanner. Now I'll take you through the process and show you how I do that. So, um, and I'll come back when I've done that and show you how I load it into the scanner itself and give you a bit of a, an overview of how that's done. Well, I have the slide carrier here and I'll show you some uh, tools I use in order to put the slides in. So the first tool are cotton gloves. They are completely essential because there's a lot of oil on your fingers and if you don't protect your slides, you'll have fingerprints all over them and those fingerprints scan very well. So bear that in mind. The second tool I use are pinches. This is to help me load and unload the slides into the slide tray. I also use an anti-static brush to wipe the slides because obviously you get lots of dust on these things. Then I have a magnifying glass, which is useful if you're looking at the slides and checking them out, because you can then uh, see through the light box whether you have uh, a good slide or a bad slide, whether there are some blemishes on it, or even uh, to the degree where you can determine that this slide is probably not worthwhile scanning. So you would simply take it out and not scan it, save some time. Now let's talk about the carrier a bit. As you can see, it can take uh, 12 slides. I've put this number here to remind me the sequence they go into because when I take them out of the slide carriers or boxes, they're either numbered or in a sequence and I want them to be in the same sequence because in the software you can give them a number and if you scan them in, uh, if you put them in in the right sequence, the number su sequence the software allocates is correct. So number one is the top right and then down to four and then you start at five again down to eight and then nine down to twelve. The, the next thing is that all these uh, holders uh, that come with the Epson scanner, 
which hold different types of negatives and films. They have a height adjustment. You can see I put some tape on it here so it doesn't move. The height adjustment is in relation to the fact that the focus of the optics in the scanner is optimized for a certain distance off the glass plate. And these by default, that's the default setting for from factory. You can actually validate that by uh, doing your own scans at different heights and then working through whether the optimal focus is in place or not. I did that on mine and I reached the conclusion that the factory calibration was probably correct and therefore they're on the second uh, mark here. But the tape here is because some of the detents uh, are loose and I've noticed that the slider sometimes goes out of alignment. Now, putting in a slide. First of all, there are different types of uh, negatives or, or positives they're called slides. And they have two sides, a shiny side and a matte side. Normally when you do the scanning, you have to put your uh, slide with the shiny side towards the optics of the scanner. So uh, in this case, you would uh, put the slide in like this. The shiny side is this one, so you put it in like that. Now, bear in mind, some slides would uh, have a different orientation of the photo, but you will always put all your slides the same way. It doesn't matter if they are out of orientation, because at the end of the day, the scanning process will scan them and you can change the orientation after you've done the digitization. The reason for that is because when the scanner does the scanning, it, it starts here at the top and comes at the, towards the bottom. You don't want some slides being uh, like this because that means the scanner has to start scanning and it's halfway or started scanning this one before it starts the next one. So you're better off having them all in the same orientation. Now, to take them out, I use the pincher because um, my finger, you're supposed to be able to do it like that, but my fingers are just too big. So I usually do it like this which is a lot easier. There we are. Another thing is uh, once you put your slide into uh, the holder, I would recommend you push it here because you can see they can be misaligned. That it's quite important to have them all uh, flush against the left hand side. That helps with the consistency in the scanning. So as you can see it can be flushed here and there's a gap here. You don't want that. You just push it here and then you do that for all of them and they will then all be flush against that edge and they'll be then a lot easier to scan. Another thing to understand is uh, the, there's a special type of uh, film, slide film, called Kodachrome. It re requires different settings when you do the scanning for that. You can easily recognize them because they have a label on it that says Kodachrome, or they're usually in a paper frame. However, if you can't uh, determine whether it's a Kodachrome or not, the easy way is to look at the back side of them where you have the uh, matted side and you can see the back side of it is like, it's almost like it's embossed on, on it. So they're fairly easy to recognize these Kodachrome uh, films. Uh, why do you need to do that specifically? 
because in Silverfast there's a special setting for the uh, Kodachrome film because it has slightly different attributes and requires uh, different adjustment in the software. But what I'll do, I'll load up some slides into the carrier, put it into the uh, Epson scanner, and then I'll uh, fire up the software. I'll show you when I load the carrier into the scanner to give you uh, visibility of what you need to do when you're doing that. All right. Well, I'm here with the slide carrier fully loaded with 12 slides. So uh, it's time to put it in. As I mentioned before, I pushed them all towards the left here to, to make sure they're flush against the carrier sides, all the same. The other thing you can see is that uh, they're all oriented the same way, regardless of what the picture is. That's the best way of doing it. Now let's do that. And before you load it, the first thing you need to do is get one of these. This is uh, an air puffer. So you just do that in order to get all the dust away. You do that also on the slides. I've already done it, so... The next thing you do, you put the slide carrier into the slide scanner. The thing to know is, if you do that, you can see that there's a play in, in the tabs here. So it could be like this, or it could be like that. Now that's a few millimeters out, so if you want consistency in the scanning, you should probably just push it up and to the right. So the carrier is always in the same spot for the scanning process. I'll show you in the software why that's important, because there's a function in the software called frames, and the frames go around here. And if you want it consistently the same, the carrier needs to be in the same position and a few millimeters can make a huge difference. But now we're ready, we can close the scanner and uh, fire up the software and see what happens. All right, we are back here at the computer firing up the Silverfast software, which is here. Now, before I do that, I'll clear it out or put it into its default settings and show you a couple of settings which are good to um, make changes to. So to reset it back to default, you go to the service dialog and hit this big uh, red button called Software Reset. Once it's done that, uh, we'll start up the software and we are now ready. Now, before we do any scanning or any other settings, let's go into the software settings or the preferences and change a couple of things. First here under general, the, the, what is, where it says high resolution pre-scan, change that to eight. And I'll explain that a bit later. Uh, under auto, put in here where it says find frames outset and I'll explain that a bit later as well. I put minus minus one in that field. Some people put minus two, depends on your uh, preference. Minus one seems to work fine for me. Now that's the first thing to do if you start from scratch with the software. The next thing you have to do is to tell the software what you're about to scan. And uh, those buttons up here tell the software what you're about to scan. The first one is, uh, are you scanning a reflector, which is simply a, a, a photo, a transparency or a wide transparency? In our case, we're scanning a slide and slides are transparent therefore that's the first setting 
The second one is positive or negative or kodachrome. Uh, I showed you some slides uh, on the light table and talked about the kodachrome here in Silverfast. Uh, if you have a normal slide, you would say positive, but if you have a kodachrome slide, you would use kodachrome. That's that sets up the software to do uh, the best scanning of that particular film type. The next setting is the output. What do you want the output to be? The first one is uh, receive data from the scanner using 48 bits and put it down into 24 bits. Uh, that's what I normally use. Then you have black and white, uh, grayscale, uh, sort of raster. And then you have pure 48 bit, which is more data and bigger image files. But unfortunately, 48 bits isn't compatible with every piece of software. So uh, it gives you bigger files, higher resolutions and some of the photo professionals use that. So that's fine. 16-bit uh, is, once again, high resolution grayscale. And then you have the HDR RAW, which are silver fast formats, whereby you scan the data into a file and then you use uh, software from Silverfast to manipulate the files. The, the benefit of that is uh, you're not losing any information. It actually retrieves all the 48-bit data from the scanner and it stores that data in the file and you can then use the HDR software from Silverfast to manipulate that whichever way. This is if you want to capture every last bit of the files. But most commonly used is 48 to 24 bits. The next thing you do is to do what's called a pre-scan. Uh, the pre-scan is here. You initiate that here. And this is where that first setting where I changed it from 1 to 8 comes into play. What the scanner all the software does now is to scan the slides in high resolution. It makes a big difference uh, later on because when you're looking at individual slides or zooming into them, there's no need to do the high resolution scanning for each individual one. Normally, if the setting is on one, what happens is that the, this pre-scan is a lot faster, but every time you zoom into a particular slide image, it has to do a separate high detail pre-scan for it. So you save time in the long run. So let's wait while this finishes, and then I'll come back when it's done. All right, we have now finished pre-scanning all the slides and we end up with a single frame across all the slides. Now, in the software, there are lots of things you can change in relation to the images, like the brightness, the contrast, the color cast, and, and you can use some of the tools like the uh, dust removal, uh, you can use the uh, HDR function here, which is uh, scanning two uh, scanning the same slide twice under and overexposed, and then merging that together. Now all of these settings apply to this individual red frame now. So the first thing I want to do is to select one of the slides. This, this is the first slide, number one. So we'll do that. I usually like to just do it a bit over. And next I'll zoom into it. And that's your spyglass zoom here. 
voila now we have that slide here full screen easier to work with so what I'll do I'll reduce the frame here because that's what I want to do I don't want these black borders anywhere in the in the scan the reason for that is I like to use the auto tools which do auto correction I'm not a professional and I'm not doing this from scratch so I rely on the software to help me here as an example of that I can show you here if you go to the histogram you can see the histogram gives you an overview of all the colors and uh, pixels or throughout the image and you can see black is here and pure white is here and there's a big gap here uh, when you go and do auto color correction uh, that's a tool that will bring it within the boundaries of your histogram and now you can see black is here white is pulled up here and the midtones are there and obviously the photo is a lot better uh, while you don't want the black border I'll show you if you pull out the black border you can see the histogram how the histogram changes it's adding more black pixels into the histogram so it's now factoring that black frame into all its calculations in re relation to the image and uh, you don't want that especially when you're scanning negatives and utilizing what's called negafix which are settings supplied by silverfast adapted to the particular film you're using it causes lots of problems so you always want to just capture the image itself so I'll do that again now what I want to do next is uh, decide uh, where this image is taken and put that where, where and when that image is taken and put that into the EXIF information for the image so when it's saved out that information uh, can be read by other software and there's a button here called IPTC and that button opens up this dialog and you can then put in information which is saved within the file now once you've done that you can save it to reload it for the next batch so what I'll do here I'll just say travel in Australia 1988 so we can add a keyword Australia I'm not putting credits origin is when this is is the date when it was created and i can tell you that was in 1988 back in september probably around mid-september i'll say the copyright So you can add a number of things in here you can add more keywords credits obviously we can say city uh, let's add Australia and then you can save this out as a text file and you can call it Australia Travel. 1988 because once you've finished with this batch of uh, slides you can quickly load back that particular file and you're all set to go 
and then you can uh, get the file back here and you have the same information no need to retype it next thing you do is uh, obviously decide where you want to store your output you also need to work out uh, how what density you want to scan this image the, I've sort of settled on about 1800 to 2400 DPI. So 2400 pixel per inch gives me a file of 20 megabytes and I save it as a TIFF file, which is a lossless file. That's what I've settled on. So now that setting will apply to this frame. Next, I want to use the unsharp mark, mask. If you go here, you can see unsharp masking. It does a bit of auto sharpness. I like to do that because normally scanning from flatbed scanners gives uh, a soft image. I also want to do uh, ISRD, which is the capability of um, re dust and scratch removal which is very useful. The Epson scanner has an infrared scanning capability and it can pick up the dust on the slides and it can show you where that is and then remove it. It's a very powerful tool. I'm not gonna go into all the tools, just show you some of them. And then uh, this tool here, which is uh, grain and noise elimination if there's a lot of noise in your image you can use that I prefer not to use it so I turn it off now you can see ah, you can see there's a red dot here there's a red dot here and a red dot here that means these tools are active I want to deactivate the grain and noise I just click this X here and it's gone this one here does the HDR scanning I do that for some images uh, and some not just depends on uh, what's in there let's say I want to do it for this one uh, then I simply turn it on and you have the red dot there the, those are the main settings I use now, once I've done this, all the settings I've selected and activated and, and changed only apply to this frame. And I also have that EXIF information ready to go here. So, uh, how do you get that onto these? Well, the trick is you simply go into frame find frames and say slide 35 millimeter holder and hit OK. And as you can see, it will find and create frames around all the images and it numbers them from 1 to 12. So 1 is here, 5 is here, 9 and 12. But what it also did, when it created all the new frames, it copied all the settings associated with the first frame. So essentially what it's done is auto color correction on every image. It's assigned the same settings from all the tools. And therefore, if you're happy with that, that's all you have to do. Then you go in here, scan, and select batch scanning and off you go. Now I prefer to have a quick look at all the images and, and zoom in on them. And this is where the benefit of the high resolution scanning comes in. If I hadn't changed it from one to eight, it would be high resolution scanning every individual uh, image as I zoomed into it, but I don't have to do that. Now, the next thing I wanna do is, if I wanna 
make any additional changes to this image I might go to the histogram and make some changes to it sorry <laughs> The histogram is here sometimes if it's too bright or too uh, dark or not balanced you can change uh, these settings this one here makes it a bit darker the further you move a bit lighter the further you move towards that there this one here adjusts the mid-tones in the image sometimes I want to darken it slightly you can also see that uh, the sharpness I've got auto sharpness and I'll see if I can increase the sharpness yeah that's a bit better uh, and I've got the double scanning on I'm not going to put that on this one so I deactivate that so I'll have a look at the next image uh, to do that I need the navigator <laughs> The navigator is here and as you can see these are thumbnails of all the slides so I can go to the, this one here and have a look at that I check that the frame is okay it's all good I might slightly adjust the make it a bit darker but other than that it should be fine next one yeah that's good so this is how you can go individually through and turn on or off tools or settings associated with each frame or each uh, slide the benefit of doing it this way is uh, once you sort of get used to it you become very adept and quick in doing it and then uh, you obviously get a, a faster process going now when I started with the first slide and did the frame find as I said it copied all the settings across to all the other frames but what it also did was it did this auto color correction now depending on the types of slides you have they might all be landscape slides uh, like this one uh, up here you have different settings you can use to do the color correction and uh, light balance correction and for some slides they come out better if that setting matches what you're looking at so um, one of the tricks you can do is if you go into the preferences you can actually uh, set what the automatic image uh, optimization is by default so you could say auto co color correct or if they're all landscape uh, use landscape or if they're all people photos with portraits you can use portrait so if you do that uh, say put that there and if you then have scanned your only uh, you set up the settings for the first one if you then went in here and did the frames uh, sorry find frames and that then when it scans all the others it will do auto color correction or landscape or whatever settings you've chosen to use and then when you are looking at each individual image you can then simply change the setting and and adapted to each individual slide so um, that way uh, it becomes fairly quick to manage each one of them so uh, 
And as I said, once you're finished, it's just a matter of uh, going here, batch scan, it will prompt you as to where you want your uh, images saved. And then uh, you just choose your folder. I'm obviously don't have a proper folder for it, so I'll create one. Australia 1988. And here you can give them a, a name Australia. You can start at number one and remember when I talked about the location of the slides from one to twelve, it will automatically increment that number and add it to that name, Australia 1988 space one. I prefer the space. Uh, you can uh, use a different naming conventions. Some people actually put in the resolution of the, f of the scanned image, things like that. Uh, I just like to put uh, something meaningful as to where it was taken. So then we say scan and it goes off to scan all of the slides one by one and I'll show you the output folder once it's finished. All right, we are now back. The scanning is finished. You can see that here. So if I go now and pull up the folder where we saved those files, you can see them all here. Numbers from one to 12. If you then look at the program uh, and do another batch scan of, an, of the next 12 uh, slides, you can see it starts at 13. Uh, to look at the images, you can s also see that uh, if you look at the properties for the image, you can see under details, you have the title, Travel in Australia, that's where we entered the text. One of the tags is here, and then uh, date taken is 15 of the 9th, 1988. So that allows your software to sort them based on that particular piece of information. If you go to details, for instance, you see date taken. Uh, that's the crucial bit. Like if you upload it to Google Photos, that field can be used to index them properly. Now you see the 20 megabytes in size. Uh, obviously, if you change them uh, to JPEG, you get a smaller image. Well, I'm back to the software again. And what I've done, I put in the next 12 lots of slides. And I'm doing a, another pre-scan. Uh, before I do that, I'll just quickly check in the preferences. And based on the slides, I'll use auto color correction. Uh, because there's not a m many landscape slides. And now if I do a, just a pre-scan, all the same settings will apply to all the frames. So we'll wait for the pre-scan to run through and then I'll come back. Okay, the pre-scan is just about to finish. And you can see these are a whole lot of new slides. Now I placed the slides the same way into the carrier, but I goofed on a couple of them. They should be slightly pushed up because apart from pushing them to the left in the carrier, you have to pull, push them up as well, just to make sure they're all properly aligned. And this is pretty good. And now every frame has the same uh, tool setting as before. You can simply go here, zoom in, and then start doing your adjustments. Uh, you might quickly want to align that. Unfortunately, some slides are slightly offset inside the frame itself. So 
I'll do that and I'll go to the histogram like that and I can decide w which tools to put in place or adjust so I can go through all of them uh, and as you see one of them here is in the different orientation but that's easily rem fixed <laughs> sorry you just go here say rotate clockwise counterclockwise for this one and then you can uh, make your adjustments and let's see that's better uh, might make it slightly darker uh, I'll probably get a double scan on that one and so on and so on um, you notice the navigator is now horizontal you can quickly change that by just putting it back and then you can look at all the individual photos and once you have fine adjusted every photo the way you want you go back to batch scanning and here you just give them the same name or it's actually still there you delete that number and it starts from 13 again and then you're all set so the next one will be called 13 and remember the exif information this one is still here associated with every photo and uh, it's all good let's say you finish for the day you close down the software you start it up again put in the slide uh, carrier with new 12 slides uh, you then make your adjustments as before and then here you just say load grab the file with that information here and then carry on until you finish that deck of slides which can number between 30 and 38 so uh, you don't have to retype anything uh, and then obviously if you have another slide deck that's taken on a different date or different place you simply update that information in the text file and save it out again until you finish that so that's the process end to end fairly efficient fast uh, and if you're doing thousands trust me you'll become very adept at doing this so i'll close out for now thanks very much